안녕하십니까? 니콜라스입니다. Since Elon Musk took over Twitter, many people that don't like him or don't agree with his policies have been migrating to Mastodon, a rival social media platform. In a matter of weeks, Mastodon went from 300,000 daily active users to 2.5 million. On the surface, you could say that Mastodon is a Twitter clone because it sort of works the way Twitter does. You have a profile, you can follow some people, you see their posts, you can retweet their posts, like it or reply to it. But at its core, Mastodon is very different from Twitter. First of all, there is no algorithm pushing ads or trends or suggested posts. Your timeline is chronological, from newest to oldest, and that's it. Second, Mastodon is open source. We can go to the GitHub page and see how the sausage is made. The backend is built with Ruby on Rails, Node.js is used for streaming, and React.js and Redux for the frontend. But the most important thing of all, and what makes Mastodon so so different from Twitter, what makes Mastodon awesome and what makes people not want to use Mastodon is the fact that Mastodon is decentralized. Thanks to the fact that Mastodon is open source, anyone can download the code from GitHub and run their own version of Mastodon on their own server, making what is called an instance. If you want to join Mastodon, you can run your own instance, which many people don't do. Or you can find an already existing server, usually run by a volunteer that lets you join. In this aspect, Mastodon is less than Twitter and more like email. There are many email providers and you get to choose which one you use. Same with Mastodon. At the time of recording this video, there are more than 9 thousand servers running the Mastodon code. But just because they run the same software does not mean that the servers are all the same. The person running the Mastodon server has all the control and gets to make all the rules. Some servers allow you to join freely and some make you apply for a membership. Some servers are only for gamers or book readers with strong moderation rules that would delete or ban any off-topic post. There are servers only for people of specific political views, echo chambers or people that live in cities like Berlin or New York. Or servers only for adults, servers where there is no moderation and everything goes, and even servers with hateful content as well. With email, if I use Gmail and you use ProtonMail, we can still talk to each other because both of those email providers speak the email protocol. Mastodon is the same. Even if you are on the Lord of the Rings server and I am on the Thailand server, we can still follow each other and see each other's posts. That is because Mastodon Mastodon servers speak a protocol called ActivityPub. But this is not mandatory. If you want to, you can make a completely private Mastodon instance that does not talk to anyone else. This decentralized architecture is the reason why a Mastodon username looks a lot more like an email address. First comes your username and then the server where you have your account on. Mastodon.social is one of the most popular servers. So if I was on that server, my username would be at Nico at Mastodon.social, for example. Because Mastodon is decentralized, it cannot be bought or sold. It will not go bankrupt and no person has absolute control over it. But because it is decentralized, that means that it has other challenges. The volunteer that runs the instance, the admin, has to pay for the servers, databases, and storage space from their own pocket or using the donations. That same admin can see all the data on the server, including direct messages. The admin can ban you from the server and kick you out if they feel like it, and there is nothing you can do. And because there is no central authority to verify if a user is real or not, it is relatively easy to impersonate a user across many different servers with fake accounts. Many people moved out of Twitter because they don't want to trust a billionaire with their data. But nevertheless, unless they run their own server, they're going to have to trust someone anyways. Maybe it's not Elon anymore, but it's now a random dude in Bucharest. Many people, including Mastodon users, don't see Mastodon replacing Twitter. Because Mastodon, as you can see, is different and it doesn't want to be Twitter anyways. That's it for this video. I hope that you like this tiny introduction to Mastodon and I hope that now you understand what is it and how it is different from Twitter. I now would love to know what you think about Mastodon. Did you know it was decentralized? Do you think that it will replace Twitter? Are you already using Mastodon? 
let me know in the comments and if you like this kind of content please consider leaving a like and subscribe and don't forget that if you want to learn things like javascript python react react native go dart flutter among many others for absolutely free all you have to do is click the link below to join any of our many free courses that you can take right now for free click on the link below and i will see you there see you on the next one bye bye